of speech meaning out of those parts of speech right there specifically the first five parts of speech conjunction adverb verb adjective or pronoun which one of those modifies both adjectives and pronouns <clears throat> simple question and if you have done at least two workshops with me you will probably know that answer like that. Now, the difference between doing workshops with me and watching and studying my videos is that the workshops are very focused on specific things tailored to your weaknesses so that we can bring everything up equally. Whereas if you're studying just on your own without me as a guide or a tutor, you're probably going to focus more on what you're interested in and your strengths, and you're probably not going to really pay much attention to your weaknesses. That's just human nature unless you have an extremely strong force of will. But that's what a good tutor does. They try to focus... They try to identify your weaknesses and help you work on them to the point where, of course, you want your strengths to be strong. And that's something you can always fall back on. But if you're weak in an area and you don't work on that, then that's always going to be a point of contention. And if you get these predatory type of individuals out here, they will be able to see where that weakness is and go right for it. And it'll bust apart. doesn't matter how strong your strength is. It's going to bust apart. It's like, again, you know, I use those analogies of, of combat sports and things like that. You get a guy, for example, let's see. What's a good example I could say? Okay. A guy like Chris, uh, the cat smasher Lieben. That guy, he's a southpaw. But he had a really strong left hand. And if he touched you with that left hand, you got knocked out. That was his strength. Now, he had other things as well. He could grapple and things like that. He could strike, but not as good as an elite level striker. He could grapple, but not like elite level grappler. So if he came in and hit you with his strength and hit you, it was over. But if he fought someone like, for example, Michael Bisping, one of the legends of MMA, legendary for losing an eye and still fighting as champion, middleweight champion in UFC with only one eye, and the athletic commission didn't even know about it. That's pretty badass. But uh, he came in, and Michael was elite level on everything, striking, grappling, and he just walked circles around uh, leaving. Because all Lieben had was that left hand, and Michael knew that, and Michael stayed away from it. So that's kind of like you studying correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. And let's say parse is your strong point, but you can't create a correct sentence structure, nor can you syntax. You're kind of going to be you're going to be caught lacking. Let's put it that way. Or if your strength is correct sentence structure, but you don't know how to syntax, or you're not sure about it. That's going to catch you lacking. So that's where a tutor comes in, a good tutor who pays attention to your strengths and weaknesses and caters to the things that are going to make you better um, as a skilled user of this grammar. 
And I like to think that I have cultivated that uh, in the last six years of teaching this. I'm going to use this platform right now. Hopefully, there's some people out there watching, some students of mine. I want to ask all of my advanced students right here, right now, is it okay if I use your correct name to make a list of quote-unquote honor roll students to credential you as a highly advanced student, someone that knows correct sentence structure and can stand on 10 toes with it and put that in a public video. Reach out to me via email if, if that's the case, if you're okay with me using your correct name and putting you out there in the public. Because that's how credentialing works. That's how certification works. Like with uh, Raven and myself. Raven's knowledge level certifies me. My knowledge level certifies Raven. Same as Ricardo and myself. Ricardo's knowledge level certifies me. I can certify Ricardo and on down the line. There is no break and you continue into the evidence. Thank you for credentialing yourself, Vlastimil. Um, I'm pretty sure, hold on. I got to check my records because my memory isn't that great. I got to say that you were a student of mine. Yeah, I don't, I don't really, I have no, that was in 2020. That was in the beginning of 2020. So that's over four years ago. So I have no idea what your knowledge level is now at this point. No clue. It's my experience that most people that do workshops and then drop off, um, they usually regress with one exception. And that is the exception of Annette uh, from over by the land down under down there. Let's say it that way. Uh, she did a number of workshops with me and got very advanced and then just disappeared for like six months to a year. And then when she came back, she was actually better than when she left. So she kept up on it every single day. So that's the one exception. But for most people, they regress because they don't have a direction. They don't have that, uh, what do you want to call it? The sort of magnetic center that the tutor provides. Until you get to such point where you crystallize your own magnetic center and then you don't need a tutor anymore. Then you just know what is correct and what is not. So I would have to see an example of your correct sentence structure, Vlastimil, to get a sense of where you're at with this. Which, I mean, if you're even, if you even want to share that, that's up to you. I know a lot of people are, are not, you know, they don't want to show their knowledge level for one reason or another. Um, probably for the same reason that uh, I was very cautious about doing live streams in the beginning because I didn't I just didn't want to look stupid but then I stopped worrying really about what other people thought of me and that comes with cultivating humility so yeah Vlastimil if you want to give me an example of your correct sentence structure knowledge like create a a full sentence of correct sentence structure stating a simple claim in the chat I can get a look at it and uh, get an idea of where you're at Over four years is a long time. Anybody who comments on here, the first thing that happens when you click on a comment box is the community guidelines thing pops up. And if you click on that, that will give you all the terms and conditions <clears throat> of this comments field. It's up to you whether you read it or not. Most people don't because they don't care. They're not worried about anybody else's feelings. They just want to, you know, share theirs. They just want to get their point across. They don't care what anybody else thinks. 
And that's the basic attitude across the internet. And I try to cultivate a different type of atmosphere here, one of honor and grace. I mean, it doesn't matter to me what you say as long as you say it respectfully. And as long as it follows those terms and conditions of the community guidelines of this channel. The truth can be used as a weapon to hurt somebody in a malicious way. Like someone will say something to someone else and it will be a true statement. But they will use it in such a way that they want to emotionally damage someone else. That is not correct psychology. If it's your volition to harm someone, like purposely harm someone, maliciously, apropos of nothing, then correct sentence structure is not going to help you in any way, shape, or form. Just like it probably won't help you with a drunk driving charge, just like it probably won't help you with an excessive speeding ticket. You know, if you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong. There is no getting out of anything. You do what you do and you take accountability for it. And that's the bottom line. I think that's what most people don't get. It's sort of, like, I know I'm probably going to lose a few viewers over what I'm about to say next. It's sort of like the, the Christianity thing, which I had a discussion with this, uh, about this with a friend of mine, a very dear friend of mine. where they said that, and this is, to paraphrase, a Christian, they said that if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it doesn't matter what happened before you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to go to heaven. So... <clears throat> That means you can be a rapist, a pedophile, a murderer, so on and so forth, up until the point when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. All of that is washed away, <clears throat> and now Jesus has saved you, and you can go to heaven. And as a pedophile, rapist, or murderer, stand next to the actual good people who never did anything like that. <clears throat> Does that make any sense to you? And even after you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can still make mistakes. You can still go out and rape and murder or whatever, but you'll be forgiven as long as you accept Jesus into your heart. What logic is that? There is zero accountability there. So that, that's sort of like the internet, zero accountability. All right, Vlastimil has left a sentence here. And I would say, based upon that sentence, Vlastimil, you're about 65 to 70% there. So I'm going to critique your sentence. So you have, for the knowledge of your consistent service is, with my gratitude, of a learning platformed. ING is a particle of negation. ED is a past tense particle of negation. We would not use particles of negation in our facts. Okay, so one past tense, which will eliminate that one, but the particle of negation ING is a modifier. We would not use that in a correct sentence structure. With your performance of the learning, another particle of negation ING, and then CSS CPSG is not a correct. Um, abbreviation because it would be C period hyphen S period hyphen S so on and so forth. It would be have to be a correct abbreviation. And your your positional sequencing is incorrect because you precede the authority with a concern. 
So when you read that backwards, it becomes for my authority with the learning. So you cannot have a for the with the. It's always for the of the. Cause, concern, verb. Cause, concern, verb. Forwards and backwards. So you would not precede the authority with a concern. So that's my that's my take on it. You're about 65 to 75% there as far as the correct sentence structure goes. Um, and again, you know, I don't know where your syntax level is either. So, yeah, I mean, it's up to you, man. If you want to come. <coughs> what did Darth Vader say in Star Wars? If you'd like to complete your training, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. It's very difficult to get closure on this grammar without a tutor's help. I could have never learned this without Raven and the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of workshops that we did. I got one for you, Blastomil. Hold on. And I'm not picking on you, man. And I know, I know, I feel like you're old school like me. I don't, I don't feel like crit, crit, criticism doesn't bother you. I don't think. So I'm pretty sure you're okay with it. I'm going to type out a sentence in the chat. I would like you to syntax it for me. Just put the number value. Just, you know, take the short sentence that I write and copy and paste it. And then put number values on there to syntax it, if you would, please. The sentence is, the unsightly family tree is of alien descent. I would like you to syntax that sentence for me. I.e., show me the grammar modification. Credential the bank, the syntax values. Adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, position, lodial fact, past tense, future tense, or conjunction. And you should be able to do this within 30 seconds if you have closure on the grammar. You should be able to do it like that. Now, I know it's going to take a little bit of time for you to copy and paste it and put the number values in. Or you could just put the numbers values in and uh, in the chat real quick, and I'll do it. But this is just sort of like a time thing to see how fast you can do this. Because, like, I have a correct sentence structure test that I give. And if you can complete it within 10 to 15 minutes, then you got closure on the grammar. I mean, you're 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 there. But I've given it to dozens of people and none of them have been able to pass that test. This is for Vlastimil, please. So Vlastimil um, only. I know. James is here. Thank you for your membership, James. I do appreciate your support. Please, James, uh, let Vlastimil do this. Everyone else, let Vlastimil do the, the syntaxing. I don't want any, like, I'd appreciate no interference on this. All right, Vlastimil, please syntax that. You should be able to do it within 30 seconds. I'm going to go get a coffee. When I come back, I hope to see your answer. Thank you. Uh-oh. It's taking a little bit of time. So that tells me that Vlasibil may not quite be up there to, on his syntaxing. Backward, two, one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sentence and I'm going to pop in. I'm doing it right now. I'm going to pop your values in. You said backwards. So alien descent, let, let's just add in. That's going to be a dangling part of simple verb. I don't consider that a mistake. That's just an omission. Two, one, four, and then three threes in a row. Okay, I didn't really make a mistake. I just left one out. But still, there's two errors in this in this uh, syntax scenario. Can anyone credential where the errors are? Last mill. 
Can you figure it out? Because that's a huge thing to be able to figure out your own error. Uh, James, I'm not sure what you mean by that. The L.Y. and family. <clears throat> the L.Y. and family, if you... Uh, well, let's put it this way. Family is an adjective in this scenario. Family is tangible contract. L.Y. is not... If you look it up in an etymology dictionary... L-Y is not credentialed as a particle in and of itself. L-Y is not a suffix in family. If you look it up in an etymology dictionary. So that has nothing to do with anything. The syntax, Vlastimil syntax of the word family is correct. It is an adjective. And he has. Oh, no. Yeah, okay, James, you're wrong. Tree is not a verb. Vlastimil is right as far as tree. Tree is a pronoun. Or wait, no, I'm sorry. Tree is an adjective. Which one am I looking at here? Yeah. Family is an adjective. Tree is an adjective. Is is a pronoun. Of is an adverb because nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break and it continues to the evidence or an adverb. An alien descent is a dangling participle verb. All of that is correct. So that leaves us with the first two words, which is that's where the mistakes are. Vlastimil, the cannot be a two because two, a verb can only exist in correct sentence structure if it is preceded by a one. A verb can only, I'm sorry, a verb can only exist in the fiction if it's being modified by an adverb. So you could never have a two by itself at the beginning of a sentence. It would have to be one, two. If you look in all the syntax scenarios, that I've ever done, there is never, a sentence never begins with a two. In fiction babble, when you're asking a correct sentence structure question, that's different. Then it would be two, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five, six, seven. But in fiction, a sentence never starts with a two. Just like a sentence would never end with a three or a one. A sentence would never start with a two. Sentences can start with fours, ones, or threes. Anyone else out of the seven viewers that are watching this right now want to take a guess at where the mistakes are, what the mistake is, what the correct syntax banking values are in this sentence? Get help? I'm not sure what you're doing there. But what you're doing there is not syntaxing. And what you're doing there is not even correct sentence structure. So I'm not sure what you're doing there. By the way, get help. Would you please share your correct name with the chat so we know who we're talking with here? So we know you're an individual who stands behind your words with authority. As the author of your words, please share your full correct name. Pretty much everybody else is using their full correct name. <clears throat> we just ask the same consideration of you so we know who we're dealing with. <clears throat> Ramon, what we're talking about are syntax values, banking syntax values. Do you know what that means? It means these parts of speech, specifically the first four, adverb, verb, adjective, and pronoun. So non-tangible. Then it is a four. What is a four, Vlastimil? What specifically are you talking about is a four? Mm -hmm. 
And what is non-tangible? You're correct. The is non-tangible. That is correct. So what about unsightly? What are you going to do with that now? Okay, now my my communication is directed toward Vlastimil specifically. Oh. So to, again, to give you a little bit of a hint, family tree is of alien descent. That's correct. All of that is correct. Adjective, adjective. Pronoun, adverb, verb. That's all correct. We just need the unsightly. So what is your final answer, Vlastimil? What, what, how would you syntax the unsightly family tree is of alien descent? What's your final answer? <clears throat> While we wait for Vlastimil to type out his final answer, let's do some parse in that sentence. Let's point out the particles of negation. Parse is different than syntax, by the way. A lot of folks, especially folks that come from the Marcuschon Christopher part of the world, they confuse syntaxing with parse because Mark, what he calls syntaxing is actually parse because he doesn't know how to syntax. But Maybe he thinks people will think he knows how to syntax by calling it, you know, by using parse. But parse and syntax are completely different. So to parse uh, the sentence, let's look up the particles of negation. The insightly family tree is of alien descent. So vowel in front of a consonant and unsightly, that means no. The ly at the end of unsightly means no. Is is a vowel in front of a consonant. It means no. Of is a vowel in front of a consonant. At the beginning of a word, it means no. Alien, A in front of the L. At the beginning of the word, vowel in front of a consonant means no. And then descent, the D-E in that means no. Oh. Two, three. I have no idea what you're putting there, Vlastimil. Two, three, 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 four, one, two. It looked like you were on the right track. Now we're back. Ramon is 100% correct. The is a pronoun, non-tangible contract. And we know nothing can follow a pronoun except for what? A break in the continuance of the evidence, or in this case, an adverb. Unsightly is an adverb. Why is unsightly an adverb? The word sight in and of itself is tangible contract. You put the UN in front of it, it means no, no sight, but it's still tangible contract. What makes unsightly non-tangible contract is the poison suffix LY, which I've done a few videos on that explaining, giving the continuance of the evidence using the etymology dictionary to show that LY is literally a suffix that kills the tangibility, murders the tangibility of a word. So that's why unsightly would be an adverb because non-tangible contract words are either going to be what? Adverbs, verbs, or pronouns. They're never going to be adjectives. That's why Vlastimil's initial uh, syntaxing was wrong because unsightly would never be an adjective. And then family is tangible contract. It is a three. It is an adjective because if you look it up and again in the etymology dictionary, go to the earliest nativity root meanings of those particles. Ly is not credentialed as a particle. It's not a suffix in the word. So therefore it doesn't hold that poisonous power. So family is tangible contract. So unsightly is an adverb modifying family into an adjective, which is coloring tree into an adjective. Tree is tangible contract because we know what a tree is. Is is tangible contract. Okay. If you look it up, 
It's tangible contract. Go to the earliest nativity root meaning of the word. In this case, it is a pronoun because, again, it's followed by an adverb of non-tangible contract, which is modifying alien hyphen descent into a compound dangling participle verb. And there you have it. So much gratitude to Vlastimil for this opportunity for creating this learning scenario, this knowledge cultivation scenario. And Vlastimil, if you want to, you know, take that final step, get closure on the grammar, email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. I'd have to send you out a new contract because all my contracts have two-week drugs on them. So you would have to get a new contract for that and, uh, you know, get closure on it. I find that most people, you know, especially in your situation, you're almost there, man. It just takes doing it every single day and also a tutor. Yes. And much honor for you doing that. And also thank you to Ramon uh, for coming forward with that uh, great syntaxing right out of the gate. I had my doubts about you, Ramon, when, when I was talking about syntaxing and you started talking about parse. But then you uh, you brought that around with your bing, with your syntax of the sentence. It's pretty awesome. This was a, as they say in the gaming community, this is a W stream. So again, Ramon, if you'd like to get closure on the grammar. Email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. It looks like you know a little bit about what you're doing. Again, I don't know what your knowledge level is because you did come in late to the game. Um, okay, okay, I got a couple minutes left. So, Ramon, if you'd like me to assess where your knowledge level is approximately, go ahead and create a correct sentence structure claim in the comments in, this, in the chat field here, and I'll take a look at it and give an assessment. If not, go ahead and apply for a workshop because I think, uh, well, anybody could definitely benefit from a workshop if they're with the volition of doing this or actually using this. Better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it, that's for sure. This was a lot of fun. This is probably the most fun stream I've done in a long time, so I definitely don't regret making these streams public again. It's pretty cool. I'm glad when things like this can happen because it can definitely benefit other people. You know? And again, this is a, a, a matter, a perfect representation of what you put in is what you get out. If you put something into the chat, you get something out of it. If you don't put anything in, then you're probably not going to get anything out of it. Monica Relaford says, good morning, I got a question. All right. I may or may not have an answer, depending upon what your question is. I got about five minutes left, so. Rapido. <laughs> Monica, I have literally no clue what your question is. I don't see a question mark, and I don't comprehend what you're saying. Please rephrase. Please rephrase it in a concise, comprehensive question, formatted as a question in plain, simple English with a question mark at the end, and I will answer you. 
because it sounds like you have a grammar question, which is awesome. So I'll give you a moment to uh, collect your thoughts. A hyphen causes what? In correct sentence structure, a hyphen doesn't cause anything. <clears throat> a hyphen is used to connect two facts to create a compound fact, two or more facts to, cre to create a compound fact. Or if the hyphen is used in the fiction babble, like it was in the sentence that Vlastimil and Ramon syntax, it can also create compound verbs, compound, you know, other fiction babble words, depending upon the context. So a hyphen doesn't cause anything. A hyphen is used in correct sentence structure to create compound facts. That's what a hyphen does. <clears throat> like in the term correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, those are all facts connected together by hyphens, correct hyphen sentence, hyphen structure, hyphen communication, hyphen syntax, uh, parse, hyphen syntax, hyphen grammar, period. That's a compound fact. You're welcome. All right. W stream, guys, W stream. Thank you very much. I appreciate this. We got grammar questions coming out the wazoo more so than ever before. So please, you know, feel free to come back in the next live stream and we'll do it again. Because this is content that people that are actually learning the grammar want to hear. And this is the type of content that I prefer to put out. It's what I love to do. I love to teach this stuff. And that's why I try and direct people to apply for a workshop. Email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And apply for a workshop. Learn this stuff. Commit to it. Get it in your repertoire. <clears throat> Learn it so well that you can teach someone else. Well, what I'm going to do with this live stream right here in particular is, as with all the live streams, I'm going to put it in the members section so that the members can view it from beginning to end. But I'm also going to download it <clears throat> and edit it and then release an edited form of it to the public with all the pertinent grammar information and grammar lessons in it. So you don't you won't miss out on any grammar. I'm just going to take the fluff out of it. Um, <clears throat> you can find my email in the description of any video, but I will put it in the chat right here for you in brackets. <clears throat> so there is my email address. Please include your full correct name when you email me. You know my full correct name. I just asked the same consideration of you. So there you go. Ramon, <clears throat> you don't have to ask to ask a question. Just ask a question. My son will do that with my son will be like, Dad, can I ask a question? It's like, bro, just ask the question. <laughs> Why do you got to preface it? <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. That's what I'm here for. The title of this stream literally is question and closure. So go ahead. I'm here for questions. I got, oh, wow, I'm over time. So if, uh, if you're quick with it, I will answer. The time that you spent asking if you could ask a question, you could have actually just asked the question. I could be answering it right now. I'm just giving you a hard time, Ramon. The word now has no in it. It's a negative performing. Well, have you ever parsed the word now, Ramon? Have you ever parsed it? Have you ever looked it up in an etymology dictionary?
Have you ever typed the word now in etymology online or looked it up in an etymology dictionary? Have you ever done that? I'm pretty sure the question I'm asking is rhetorical because if Ramon had actually looked up now in the etymology dictionary, he would know that N-O is not a particle of the word N-O-W. It's not a syllable. The letters are there, but it's not credentialed as the word no. So therefore, now would not have a particle of negation in it. Because if you, if you follow that logic all the way through, if you're thinking in terms of, okay, N-O-W has the word N-O in it, is that a particle of negation? Well, if you look at the word knowledge, that also has N-O in it, right? So, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. But if you look up the word now in an etymology dictionary, what happens? I'll give you a hint. I'm not going to do the work for you. You have to do the work. All right, but I will give you a hint. When you look up the word now in an etymology dictionary, you will find that it tries to credential itself or give meaning to itself by using other non-tangible contract words. So now, N-O-W is non-tangible contract. And that's all I'll say about that. I personally do not use the word now in my correct sentence structure contracts because it is a non-tangible contract word and I don't normally use non-tangible contract words as facts. I don't use the word now space in my correct sentence structure contracts. I may use it in plain simple English as a knowledge cultivation tool, but I don't use it in literally my document contract, Postal Vessel Court Venues, I use the word continuum because it is positive performance. Well, Monica, the best place to learn this is in the workshops. That is the best place to learn this stuff. It's the most efficient way because I sit down with you, it's one-on-one, -on -one, and you will learn as fast or as slow as you're motivated to go wherever you are at on the geometric level playing field of knowledge cultivation, I will meet you there and take you wherever you're motivated to go. All right. Thank you. I appreciate everyone here who participated, especially Vlastimil, especially Ramon and James who participated with the grammar portion of it. Well, individuals who use the word now space, I don't think they've ever looked up the word now or tried to give closure to it using the mechanics of tangibility or non-tangibility. I used to use it as well, but I don't anymore. Now I'm not going to, I'm not going to like dock anybody really for using the word now space because it's a pretty common term in this community, in the community of quantum grammar. People use it. I'm not going to say, oh, you're not correct, blah, blah, blah. The only thing I will do is point out if I see it used in a correct sentence structure, I'll point out, well, now is non-tangible contract. You know, I'll say something like that. But if you're going to use it, I mean, I'm not going to hold that against you, man. Me, I just try to be as grammatically as correct as possible with my correct sentence structure to a degree with the balance of honor and grace. You appreciate me answering your question. Well, I appreciate you being here asking the question. And I'll see you in the next one. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one and the easiest one 
is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option, if you want to see new content, is to click the join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching. Click the join button and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the loyalist contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation, you'll get new content, fresh content exclusive content not available to the public every month but keep in mind there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study and the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and this is for the serious students only and apply for a correct grammar workshop but please include your correct name when contacting me and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation and you and I will have a conversation you can ask me whatever you want I'll answer your questions, I'll do the same with you, I'll ask you questions, and we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you.